Let's talk now about the excitation of a DC motor. To work, a DC motor needs a magnetic flux in the air gap. Now, to create this flux is what we mean by exciting the DC motor. There are four major ways of exciting a DC motor, of creating the magnetic field flux in the air gap. Independent excitation, shunt excitation, series excitation, compound excitation. There are two types of them, long compound and short compound. And in those also we have additive compound and subtractive compound for each one of them. The second one is also called as uh, differential compound excitation. Let's begin with this one. Instead of using the actual DC rotating machine, I'm using this wonderful academic idea of Professor Stephen Chapman in his textbook, The Linear Machine. In the linear machine that has all the characteristics of the uh, rotating machine, but it's very easy to visualize. We have uh, the armature on the left and we have the field coil circuit on the right and another coil down here. To create these magnetic flux in the air gap here, we apply a current to this coil NF. It's called a field coil IF. How we apply in this case an external battery VF? We control how much current we're going to put there with this adjustable resistor. And that is how we control how much flux there is in the air gap. Sometimes we use a second coil. We call that the series coil. Number of turns NS, resistance RS. Number of turns of this field coil NF, resistance of the coil RF. Independent excitation. How do we represent that coil? What coil? The field coil. The field coil, it's a coil. It has a resistance, RF. It has an inductance, LF. So we could represent the field coil with a resistor in series with an inductor like so. You see a resistor, RF, in series with an inductor, LF. However, we are in DC steady state. The current, IF, is constant. The voltage in the inductor, which is L, D, I, D, D, it's going to be zero because IF is a constant value. But if the voltage in this inductance is zero, that inductance behaves as a short circuit. That means that the actual representation of the field goal is going to be just its resistance RF. That is all. Going back to our machine. In this case, look, we have independent excitation. That is fine. I have removed all the sources from the circuit. Let me begin by connecting the armature circuit resistance of the armature and the induced voltage in the armature of this moving rod that's riding on top of those two rails connected to an external battery VT. And then we come here to the right to the field coil circuit and connect that field coil circuit in parallel with the armature. What is another word for parallel? Shunt. We connect the field coil circuit in shunt with the armature. This is called a shunt excitation and this is a shunt DC motor. Let's see a circuit diagram. Fine. Here is the external battery. We connect the armature to that one. The armature is represented by its resistance, RA, and the induced voltage, EA, in the armature. And in shunt with that, with that armature, we connect the whole circuit for the field coil. The field coil is down here, represented only by its resistance, RF. In that circuit, we identify the armature current I sub A is the field current I sub F and the total current in the circuit I sub T, the terminal current. Another possibility of what? Of excitation for the machine. In this case, I will bypass, I will ignore, I will neglect this field coil. I will concentrate on this other coil that has very few turns. Here is the external battery. But observe that I am not finished. I am not finished connecting that to the armature. No. 
we bring all the way a wire from the positive of the battery to this S coil and then from the coil is when we go to the armature you observe that the S coil is in series with the armature coil the current armature goes through all the circuit like so through the S coil and then into the armature armature coil series coil they are in series indeed this is series excitation circuit diagram sure the external battery the series coil represented only by its resistance rs and the armature is all of this in series and the current in that circuit are the armature current the series coil current i sub s and the terminals current and they are the same well, they are not quite the same, because in reality, we need to have a way of controlling the current IS, and for that we connect in parallel the control resistance RSH. So IS is just given as a current divider of the current in the terminal. Another possibility. Well, we connect the battery here on the far right to the field circuit, and then we connect directly from there the series coil and then the series coil in series with the armature and then back to the battery. Observe, you say, well, in this case, what we have really is neither shunt nor series. It's not in the pennant. This is a compound excitation. Sure it is, it's a long compound. Observe the battery in parallel with the field circuit, fine. And then we connect there the series coil like so, and in series with that one, we connect the armature. In that circuit, the terminal current, the field current, the series coil current, and the armature current are identified, and we need, of course, the controlling resistor RSH in parallel with the series coil. What is left? We connect the field coil circuit in parallel with the armature in shunt, but then we take the series coil and connect that directly to the positive of the battery, the external and only battery in the circuit like so. And then we continue from the series coil into the armature connection like so, and we close the circuit back here. Let's have a look at that in the circuit diagram. The difference is that in the short compound, the field coil is very close to the armature, is short, the distance, and in the long compound, the field coil is really far from the armature, that it's long compound excitation. That is the name. Short compound, long compound. The names of the currents are given as the terminal, the series coil, the field coil, and the armature coil. Again, sure, let's wire that. We have one external battery up here, one armature coil between the terminals A1 and A2, a field coil between terminals F1 and F2, and the series coil between terminals S1 and S2 in a connection box in the laboratory, and we connect them like so. The battery to the armature, and then in shunt with that, we connect the field coil. Of course, we need this additional adjustable resistor. That is a shunt motor, right? Shunt. Again, and now, and this time, I will neglect, I will ignore the field coil and connect the circuit like so. I connect the RS coil in series with the armature. That is a series motor. Again. Well, we connect again this in series like so. You say that is a series. Yeah, but we are not done. We connect also the field coil with its adjustable resistor in parallel with the armature. Of course, we're going to need that control resistor in parallel with the series coil. We have a short compound excitation motor. If we move the field circuit away from the armature, like so, we have a long compound excitation. To end this movie, of course, we include the independent excitation all over again, now in equivalent circuit. The armature circuit on the left and the field coil circuit on the right. 
So we have equivalent circuits. What else? We have the induced voltage E sub A, that is a function of the flux, and of how quickly the machine is moving. You say, omega, this is a linear machine, the one you've been showing us. Yes, but now the formula is for the real machine. Omega in radians per second. And the induced torque? Well, that is proportional to the flux, K5, and to the current in the armature. Who is K5? K5 comes out of the magnetization characteristic, at least one. We find what is the field current, IF, and with that we find K5. And with the formulas on the top we find the induced voltage, EA, in the armature, and the induced torque, T. Thank you very much. I hope this has been useful, and I hope to see you again in the next movie.